Ooh, I love, I love, I love Les Mis. Uh, it is such an incredible musical. If you haven't seen it yet, I recommend it. I have been to the West End and watched it like a number of times. And I can watch it every single time and I'll still get the, the skin tingling feeling. When we go on family trips and we're driving a long way, this is what we put in the car and we start singing and Emma does one part and I do the other part and we do that kind of, it's, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. I know that will put anyone from going on a journey with us. But I absolutely love this film, I love this musical. And, um, and I think that the, the thing that most stands out for me in this musical is this scene. This scene is actually the center of the whole story. It's a book by a guy called Victor Hugo, huge book. If you're into reading books, it is worth reading because this is the turning point moment when this man, Jean Valjean, he has been arrested for stealing some bread to try and feed his sister and their family. He spent years and years in prison. He's now going from place to place trying to get work. He can't get work because he has to show papers showing that he was a criminal. And finally, this bishop says, come into my house, I'll feed you. And what does he do? He sees the silver, he sees all of the, the finery, and he's like, yoink, I'm gonna steal that. He gets caught, and then this bishop lies to the police and says, I gave it to him. And this gift is, is the turning point. It's the gift that absolutely changes his life and everything that happens in this story after this point all the good that he does all the sacrifices that he makes the way that he just helps other people all of the blessings the way that he lives his life everything flows from this moment from this gift and the point that i wanted to make by showing you this video is that a gift has the power to change your life that a gift that is so good can change absolutely everything that is going to come ahead. And I believe that God has blessed you with gifts. Not just one gift, not just two gifts. God has blessed you with so many gifts. And I believe that there's so many of us, we're walking around and we've got these gifts that God has given us and we just have no idea of the power and the impact that they can have in our lives. And I think that God wants to do something amazing in you. I think that God wants to do something amazing to you. But I think that really God wants to do something incredible through you. That the gifts that he have given to you should change your experience of life. But they should also change the world all around you. They should change your whole story. In 1 Corinthians 12 verse 1 it says this. Now about the gifts of the spirit brothers and sisters i do not want you to be uninformed if you are a christian the moment that you gave your life to jesus you got four gifts the first three are gifts that all of us got the fourth is a little bit bespoke the first gift that you got was the gift of forgiveness ephesians 1 verse 7 says he is so rich in kindness that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and he forgave our sins. If you believe in Jesus, if you're following Jesus, your past is gone. The slate has been wiped clean. The Bible says that your sins are as far from you as the East is from the West. It's saying they're gone. They're not counted against you. You are completely forgiven. And some of us find this really difficult because we look at our past and we're like, but, but Ben, we've done some bad stuff. I've messed up. There's some darkness in my history. But God says, I wipe that clean. I, I forgive you. I forgive you and I forget. I don't hold it against you. I don't see that at all. Your gift of forgiveness is completely yours. And we can live lives in light of forgiveness. The second gift that you get immediately is the gift of eternal life. Romans 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin are death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. If you believe in Jesus, if you've given him your life, then you are now a citizen of eternity. 
This life, these challenges, these struggles, our work, everything that we're doing here, it's like, it's like just a little blip at the beginning of what is going to go on for eternity. Life, love, joy. There'll be a time when every tear is wiped away. There'll be a time when every wrong is made right. You get the free gift of eternity. Gift number three, you get the gift of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. When Jesus left, he said, I'm going to give you an amazing gift, the Holy Spirit, and he is going to be your guide. And so you can know God every single day. You can walk hand in hand with God because you have the Holy Spirit with you, challenging you sometimes, encouraging you sometimes, equipping you sometimes, opening doors, closing doors, healing you restoring you, working in you and through you. You have the free gift of the Holy Spirit. You have forgiveness, you have eternal life, you have the Holy Spirit. And then there's the fourth gift. And this gift is different for each of us. This looks different in different people at different times. And this is the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. These are spiritual gifts and talents that God has sown into you. Romans 12, verses 6 through 8 says this. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as he has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. God has blessed you and he has blessed me with spiritual gifts. And these are different from person to person. And they're not like, they're not like identities, they're not jobs. The spiritual gift isn't that I now work in this role. These are ways that we live. These are our talents and and different things that we can do. And so there's a list that it gives. It's not everything, but it gives us an idea of some of the different gifts that we could be blessed with. It says leadership, administration, teaching, knowledge, wisdom, prophecy, discernment, exhortation. That means like encouraging helping people to thrive in life, shepherding, faith, evangelism, apostleship. Apostleship is like bringing the good news into new spaces, new cultures, new generations, new areas. Apostleship, service or helping people, mercy, giving, hospitality. And this is the question that I just want us to think about today. What is your gift? Do you know? What is your gift and how are you using it today? And maybe you're hearing, you're like, I have no idea what my gift is, Ben. I don't know. Maybe you're like, I really do know. And and the challenge for you isn't what it is, but but how is it that you're going to be stewarding? And we're going to spend the next few weeks digging into this and working it out. But, But if you have the gift of leadership, we want to help you to really step into that and to flourish as a leader. If you have the gift of healing, we want to see you use that gift so that people are healed and they can experience the amazing grace of God. If your gift is is administration and we want to help you to grow and to develop, whatever your gift is, we want you to thrive and flourish. And I think that if we all knew our gifts, if we really knew them and we were all able to use them well, then every single one of us would be a lot more fulfilled in our lives. Why? Because our gifts reveal our purpose. I think that this is a universal problem in our culture. We don't know why we're here. We go through life and and we work. You know, you get up in the morning, you have breakfast, you go to work, you come home, you watch TV, you go to bed, you get up, you go to work, you come home, you watch TV, you go to bed, you get up, you go to work, you come home, you watch TV, you go to bed, maybe you go to a party at weekends, and every now and then you're like, there's got to be something more. This can't be all that there is in my life. 
And it's because you have a purpose. God has made you on purpose for a purpose. I heard someone say a little while ago that there's no such thing as an accidental baby. There's accidental parents who didn't know that they were going to have that baby, but there's no accidental babies. God knew you before you were born. And he has woven you in a specific way. And he has incredible plans for your life. And here's the thing, your design reveals your destiny. When you see the gifts that God has given to you, it shows you something of what he wants to do in you and through you. It shows how he wants to use you. So many people, every single week, they're like, God, use me. God, do something amazing in me. God, I'm here, send me. And if you just stopped and looked and saw how he has gifted you, it would show you where he wants to use you, where he wants to send you, how he wants to use you. God wants to reveal your purpose. I think if you recognize your gifts, you'd feel a lot more fulfilled. I also think that if you knew your gifts, that we as a community would be a lot closer to each other. We would have a much stronger sense of what it means to be a community. Uh, this week I was thinking about this talk and, and chewing it through. And when, I, when I'm in that kind of zone, I tend to zone out everything else. And I was walking to the office and I was thinking about what I wanted to say and a car pulled over. The lady rolled down her window and said, oh, could you give me directions, please, to Churchgate? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'll give you directions. You go over there, you turn right here. You go. She drove away and I realised that I hadn't actually really been listening to her and I'd given her directions to the complete wrong side of Stockport. And I was like, bless this poor lady who's now trusting me to go to the other side of Stockport when she really needed to come to where I was walking the whole time. And you see, the thing is, when I'm in my zone, my gift is not listening. I'm not a particularly great listener. I have to really work hard to listen well. What my gift is, is preaching. And, and this is true of us naturally. We all have different strengths. We have different weaknesses. But it's true of us spiritually as well. Your gift is somebody else's weakness. And your weakness is somebody else's gift. And that's the incredible thing about community is as we start to recognize our spiritual gifts, it actually brings humility. Because I realize I can't do everything all the time. I cannot exist as an island. I'm not strong enough to stand by myself. I need you and you need me. And so there's some things that I'm brilliant at and some things that God has blessed me at. I know that I can speak in public and that that's a gift of mine. I know that I'm gifted in leadership, but I'm, I'm not gifted in prophecy. Like Emma, if I need somebody to hear God, I'm like, Emma, what do you think God is saying in this situation? And so I have to lean on other people's strengths and then I need to serve with my strength. And so when we recognize our gifts, we recognize that each and every single one of us are so strong, but each and every one of us are also so weak. And God has done this on purpose. He has gifted us in this way so that we would come together. And he has given us as a community everything that we need to do everything that he has called us to do. We are his plan A for transforming Greater Manchester. And there's no plan B. He uses his church. He uses his people. And he has blessed us and he wants us to do it together. So God uses us. And maybe you're here and you're like, oh, but, but my weakness is frustrating. I don't feel qualified. I don't feel like, like I'm enough. I don't feel like I, I'm able to go and do these things. And if that's you, then, then I get that because that's been me as well. And that's a story that we see all the way through the Bible. And one of the earliest Christian min missionaries is a guy called Paul. And um, he, he, was, he was speaking to a church and this church was saying to him, look, Paul, how do we know that you're qualified to help us? Like, where's, where's your papers? Where's your diploma? Where's your Bible college degree? We, we, we don't know. That how, people are saying that you're like just making stuff up. How do we know that you're all right to help us? And he's like, look, it's not, it's not really about me. It's not about my diploma. It's not about my studies. He's like, you can tell that I'm the right person because of the fruit. You can tell because God is using me, that God is working through me. And they say, but you're not even a good preacher. They say, you can't speak well. We wish that you were more like Apollos, who's this amazing communicator. And I wonder whether that there was days when Paul was like, ah, oh, 
I wish I could have been more like him with his gifts. I wish I could, have, I could have had that skill. I wish I could have had that ability. But I'm so glad that he didn't. I'm so glad that he stayed in his lane because the Bible that we have was written, most of the New Testament was written by Paul. If he'd have got distracted and gone off chasing other people's gifts and missed the fact that his gift was writing, his gift was sharing these letters, we would not be as encouraged as we are today. And so God has given us different gifts so that we can support each other, so that we can encourage each other, so that we can be closer to one another. And so I think that if you recognize your gifts, you'd feel so much more fulfilled. We would be so close as a community. And I think that you would see so much more fruit in your lives. One of the things that I find I'm most trying to challenge myself at the moment in my life. And one of the things that I'm most trying to encourage other people in the church is to move from a place of working just in grit and to spend more time in grace. And what I mean by that is that, that in life we have jobs or maybe we serve in teams and there's times when, man, it's tough. There's times when it's, it's really challenging and you find yourself working hard, working hard, working hard. But when you discover the gifts of the Spirit, you see spiritual fruit. You see God use things in amazing ways. Like when you see somebody who has a gift of leadership, it's just like, it just flows. And you see them doing things, you're like, how did that work? But they just have the gift. And it, it, just, it just bears amazing fruit. And so I want to spend as much time as I can stepping into my gift and stepping into my grace and not just working in the grit. Now, don't hear me wrong. There's always going to be grit. We're not going to live in a world where you get to do what you want all of the time. That's just not how it works. Like, there's going to be jobs that you don't want to do and that you have to do. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, one for me is Soul Kids. As a church, we've said that we want to have an amazing kids' ministry and we want this to be a place where parents are involved and we're all helping out. So I've signed up and I'm going to be helping out in Soul Kids when I'm not preaching here. If, if you don't see me, it's because I'm going to be out with Soul Kids. Why? Because it really, really matters. And I think it's really important that we bless the next generation. We invest in them and we encourage them. Do I think that's my gift? No. I don't think it's my gift at all. I think that there's always going to be things that are important that we have to do which might not be our gift. So what I'm not saying is just abandon all of your responsibilities and only do what you want to do. Sorry, Emma, my gift is no longer filling the dishwasher. Sorry, Emma, my gift is not helping people so you can get your own ketchup. That's not what I'm talking about. That's just being like immature and weird and rude to people. We have to operate outside of our gifts, right? But the more that you can be aware of where your gifts are, and the more you can know what God has invested in you, and you can invest your time in there, you will see amazing fruit. You will see God do fantastic things. And it doesn't mean that life is suddenly going to be easy. I remember like the lowest time for me in my ministry was about eight, nine years ago. And I was just like, look, this is too hard. I just want to give up. I don't want to work in church anymore. I don't want to do it, Lord. Let me quit. And every single Sunday I would turn up and I would preach and it would be painful and it would be hard. And every single Sunday I would have somebody come to me at the end and say, wow, God used that. Wow, that really spoke to me. Wow, I, I've, I've just made this big step in my faith because of something that you shared. And so when you're operating in your gifts, even when it's tough, even when it's hard, even when you don't want to keep going, you will see fruit. God will use it and he will bless other people through you. So I think that you'll be more feel, fulfilled and then it will be closer. I think you'll be more fruitful. And I also think that you'll spend more time in wonder. In wonder. Because you'll recognize, do you know what, God? That wasn't me. I wasn't even feeling it that Sunday. I was preaching and it was, I was bombing inside my own head. And then your Holy Spirit came and used it. I was just giving my average thing, but your Holy Spirit came and made the difference. You see, spiritual gifts aren't natural talents. 
That's why being able to sing incredibly is not the same as being an incredible worship leader. You could get the best singer in the world up here and sing, and we could even get some, some tingles because of their gift, but they would not lead you into the presence of God. Because a gift is spiritual. A gift is when you're partnering with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes alongside you and works with you, reveals what you could never have known by yourself, adds value that you could never have created by yourself. You see, for me, I do think that this life is short. And I do think that there's a lot of things that I long for in this life, a lot of things that I work for in this life. But more than anything, I want to sow into the eternal. I want to sow into the things that really matter, that will matter now, that will matter tomorrow, that will matter in a hundred years, that will matter in an eternity. That's what I want to sow into my life. And to do that, we have to partner with God. And to do that, we have to recognize our spiritual gifts, how he wants to use us, where he wants to use us, and how we're going to grow. And so really, that's what we're going to do for the next month. We're going to keep talking about this. We're going to talk about different types of gifts. We're going to talk about the shadow of your gifts and, and how, how we can actually get tripped up as we're trying to move into our gifts. We're going to talk about everything that we can think about so that we can, every single one of us, can know our gifts and use them well. And so there's a, there's a few different things that I think maybe you're going to need to do over these next few weeks. The first is, if you don't already know them, I want to encourage you today to take the time to discover your gifts. How do you do that? The first thing to do is to pray. Pray. Ask God to show you. God, what have you given to me today? God, what gifts have you sown in my life? And sometimes gifts come and go. Sometimes gifts are for a season. And so maybe you already think you know all of your gifts. I would still encourage you to pause and pray. And say, Lord, what do you want to do in and through me today, right now? Pray. The second thing that you can do is chat. Find some people around you and say, hey, what do you see in me? What is it that I do that you're like, wow, that feels special. That feels like God is in that. I've got a friend called Ben, and every time I chat to Ben, I come away just feeling so encouraged. I come away feeling like I could take on the world, like I'm a champion. I'm like, you're not even that encouraging. There's something spiritual that's happening as you encourage me in this season. Ask somebody, what do you see in me? Where do you see my gifts? Let them speak into your life. And the third thing that you can do is reflect yourself. We've got these tests that are around um, they look like this. Um, there's some as well that have larger font. If anybody needs a larger font one, then grab somebody from the welcome team and they'll give them to you. These are not the voice of the Lord necessarily speaking into your life. These are just ideas created by people, but they're designed to help us. They're designed to help us think through these questions. And so... A good fun thing that you can do over the next week is to find 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, get your best cup of coffee, however you like to brew it, or tea, or hot chocolate, or whatever you drink. Um, find a nice drink, a nice bit of space, and sit down and go through it. And when you get to the conclusions, you can disagree. If you look and it's like telling you that you are an apostle and you're like, I am very, very clearly not. You are an amazing evangelist and you're like, I'm scared of people. Like, it's feel free to, to just disagree and go, that's not me. Because even the disagreeing and the process is teaching you something. It's telling you something. And I think that ultimately what we want is for God to speak into this and for God to show us. So it's just a tool. I want you to learn and to discover, pray, chat and reflect, what are your gifts? The second thing we're going to be doing over these few weeks, we want to discover our gifts and we want to develop our gifts. Just because you have a gift doesn't mean that it's being used to its fullest ability. In Ecclesiastes 10.10 10, it says this, if the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed, but skill will bring success. 
I wonder, maybe you know your gift, but are you a little bit like a dull axe, where it takes a whole lot of effort to get anything done? This could be a period where you sharpen what it is that God has sown into you. How do you sharpen it? Number one, practice. Practice makes progress. The more that you do something, the more that you use something, the more that you'll find it easier, the more that you'll learn about it, the more that you'll recognize how to use it in yourself. The second thing you can do, find somebody else who you see that gift is in and just spend some time with them. Ask them questions, get them to critique. One of the times in my life that I grew the fastest was when I I got around my friend Mike, who is an incredible communicator. And I just said to him, look, can we meet up once a week for the next six months? And I want to ask you every question about communication. I want you to listen to my talks and rip them apart. Tell me everything that I'm doing wrong so that I can grow and develop and be better. It was brutal. It was painful. And it was maybe the most healthy thing that I'd ever done. Find somebody else who you, can, who you know has that gift oh wow, I've got the gift of encouragement and you are amazing at encouraging. Tell me everything that you know. Tell me what it is that you do to become better at this. Uh, Speak into how I'm doing this. Like like find other people. And, um, And then the third thing that I want us to do. We want to discover our gifts. We want to develop our gifts. And we want to deploy our gifts. There's no point having these amazing gifts and they're not using them. In the book of Galatians, it says, now that you have freedom, don't use this freedom for yourself, but rather serve one another in love. What are the opportunities that will come along where you can use your gift to genuinely make a difference? Where is it that you can serve somebody? Where is it that you can bless somebody? Is it in the church? Is it in the home? Is it in your workplace? Is it in Stockport? Let's use this next four weeks as a reflection time for us to say, Lord, I'm here. I don't want to be wasted. I want to use my gifts to be a blessing. Show me what it is that you've shown, that you've sown inside of me. Help me to get sharper, to be stronger. And use me, Lord, in your will, for your mission, we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite the band up and um, I just want to pray to wrap up. So Lord God, I thank you. I thank you that every single one of us has a gift. Every single one of us has been blessed by you. For those of us who don't know what that is, I pray that you would reveal that. For those of us who may be Once upon a time we knew what our gift was. Once upon a time we were leaders, or once upon a time we were encouragers, or once upon a time we were prophetic, and, and that gift has been waylaid. I thank you, Lord, that the window is not shut. Lord, that you would use us again. That you can bring gifts back to life. Lord, I pray that you would do that. I pray that you would sow more. I pray, Lord, that in this next four weeks, you would sow new gifts. That you would give us new abilities. You would use us in new ways. And that as we seek you and we discover you, that we would see your hand at work in our lives in ways that we've we've never done before. I pray, Lord, that you would bring us not just incredible gifts, but character maturity to go alongside them. I pray, Lord, that as we seek these gifts, we would have the humility to recognize that we need each other. We would have the humility to ask other people to bless us, that we cannot exist as islands on our own. For those, Lord, who have maybe used their gifts and stepped out, and they've encountered battles and pain and hurt, I pray that these four weeks would be healing, that you bring your restoration and your peace and your grace and your love. And for those of us, Lord, that perhaps we're a little bit like that blunt axe, (laughs) putting in all the effort, but it's not really working, 
develop us, sharpen us, invest in us. Not for us, not for our sake, but for your glory, for your kingdom, for your power, for eternity. We love you, Lord. We are here. Bless your holy name. Amen. Amen. So do take some time this week. Invest some time. Reflect, pray and think about it. But we're going to wrap up today with some more worship. I'd love to invite you, if you're able to, to stand with me, to join me as we just praise God.